Hello everyone, welcome back to our WebSocket tutorial. In this video we are going to be talking about push notifications. So we're going to create a simple uh, notification service class that can send some push notifications whenever we receive a message. Uh, keep in mind that these push notifications are actually quite similar or basically the same thing as what we have for our push messages, but I just want to show you uh, how you can easily do it for the notifications also. So let's uh, just get started. Um, we are here in our project and inside of our uh, main package, we are going to create a new service. Um, so it will be a Java class and uh, let's name it something notification service. Um, same as always, we are going to annotate it with uh, add service. So this just tells Spring that this is a service class. Okay, so now inside of our notification service, we are going to do same as we did in our um, WebSocket service here. So we're going to auto wire this messaging template. So we can actually just copy it from here or you can just type it out. So it's this private final simp uh, messaging template. And um, let me paste it here and let's add it to the constructor. And let's add add auto wired. So we're going to inject the messaging template here so that we can actually send some notifications. Okay, so we're going to be sending two types of notifications, we're going to send global notifications and private notifications. As you can probably imagine, global ones will go to every user and private ones will go only to a single user. So the user that you decide. You can of course make this uh, a list of users. So you can send a uh, notification to a specific list of users that you have. Um, okay, so let's implement this. Uh, let's add the first one for the global notifications. So we're going to name it uh, something like send global notifications. So send global notification will uh, create a new response message. We are going to put some content here. So something like global notification. Here you could actually put whatever you want, like maybe the, the count of your notifications or how many notifications you have, or I don't know, some details that you might need on your front end. And uh, now let's use the messaging template. We're going to call the convert and send method. So we're going to give it some destination and we're going to give the message as the payload. And destination would be uh, slash topic slash global notifications. So the topic can be basically whatever you want. So it's really up to you. And we have our message here. Now let's uh, copy this and let's paste it. Oops. Let's paste it here and let's uh, rename it to send private. So send private notification here again, we have some message and let's change the content. So it's private notification and the topic will now be a bit different. So uh, it will be um, slash topic slash private. And here to the method itself, we're going to be passing in the user ID. And here we're going to change the convert and send to convert and send to user. And as you can see, this one has an additional parameter, which is this user ID. So now we have um, three parameters, we have user ID, we have our destination and we have the payload. So which is just uh, this message. Okay, great. Now we want to use this, we can use it on a couple of places. Um, for example, we said, okay, we want to send a notification whenever we um, send a message. So whenever you get the message, you want to have a notification, okay, yeah, you have a new message. And we can do that in the message controller. For example, you can see here that we are, um, we are whenever we uh, receive something on these endpoints, so this would be the private message, this would be the global one, whenever you get them, um, you want to send a notification. So let's um, do this really quick. So we can auto wire our uh, notification service here. So private uh, notification service, uh, we can name it yeah, notification service, whatever. And simply just here to notification service dot uh, send global notification. And if I copy this and put it here, we can go um, send whoops, send uh, private notification. And now we need the user ID, the user ID in our case would be just this name of the principal. So we can just take it from here and paste it here. And that would be it. So this would uh, send a private notification 
to the this user and this would send a global notification to every user that we have. Okay, now that we have handled this case, we can do the same in, I think it's in our um, WebSocket service. Here we also have this um, notify user and notify frontend. Basically this is global one and this is the private one. We can do the same, we can uh, inject our um, notification service here. So private final uh, notification service and this will complain now to add it to constructor. So let's do that. And uh, let me just copy it from here. So we're going to take it from here and paste it here. And we are going to do the same here as we did before, send private and you have the ID here. And basically that's it. So you're sending the private notification to this user. As you can see here in our um, uh, WebSocket service, you can see that it's exactly the same what we are doing with the notifications. We have uh, the private topic, so this messages, and we have the, the uh, sorry, we have the global one and we have the private one here. Yeah, um, yeah, the front, uh, the front and the back end is done. So that's everything that we need to do in the back end. So we can close this and we can move on to the front end part now. For our front end part, we want to open up our uh, index HTML and we want to scroll down to um, message history. So you should see this ID message history where we have these messages. And what we want to do here is we want to create a span that will be just showing our uh, notification count. So let me do this and then I'll explain you what I did. And here it is. As you can see, I just added the span here to our, um, so next to the messages string. The ID is notifications. So this is something that will be um, used later on. So we're going to need this. And I have added some style. So we're just setting the color to white. We're setting the background color to red and we are adding some padding on the left and on the right side. The style is up to you. If you want to do this in a CSS and then import it here, um, you can do it like that. So I mean in a CSS file, um, but for now I'll just do it uh, nice and dirty way like this. Okay, so we're done with our index HTML. We can close this and we want to open up our uh, scripts, scripts file and we're going to go all the way to the bottom. So at the bottom, um, we want to create a couple of methods. Actually, let's scroll all the way to the top and let's create a variable here. Um, this will represent our notification count. So how many notifications we have. Um, so let me just create it. So we have uh, this notification count set at zero. And if we go here and we create a new function, something like update um, notification display or whatever. So this is used uh, to basically update the displaying of our notifications or the, the count on the in the HTML. Um, what we are going to do here is we're going to check if the notification count is zero, then we want to hide this span um, completely. And if it's uh, not zero, we want to show it and we want to set the text. So we want to set the, the count itself. So let me just implement it and then we can take a look at how it looks like. And here it is. As you can see, we are checking if the notification count is zero and then we are uh, taking the um, this element by its ID, which is notifications, by the way, you can check that in the index HTML uh, here. So whatever you have here, that's what you need to put here. And we're just hiding it in this case. And then otherwise, if we have some notifications, we are going to show this element and we are going to set the text uh, to it. So we're going to uh, write this notification count. Okay, great. Now we want to create an, uh, one more method uh, called uh, reset notification count. And basically what this method will do is we'll set the count back to zero and then uh, call this one. So update notification display. Mm, let me just create it. And here it is. So we're just uh, calling this one uh, reset notification count. And here we are uh, setting the notification count to zero. And we are calling this method that we created here. We are updating the notification display. So basically we're calling this part here. So it will just hide the notifications uh, element. Okay, great. So that would be it for these two methods. 
Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to scroll all the way on the top of our file. Mm, we can copy one of these, so it doesn't matter which one. And um, we're going to make them nice. Here we want to write notifications because that's the ID of our element. And now that we have that, on click, what should happen? Basically what we want to do here is to reset the notification count. So if you remember, reset notification count will set the notification count back to zero and will hide the element. Great. Now we want to go to our um, connect function. And um, so after we have connected successfully to our stomp client, we want to um, update the notification display. So this is just to hide the element basically because the notification count at this point will be at uh, zero. Now we can uh, copy these two and put them down here and make them a bit nicer. And what we want to do is we want to um, subscribe to our uh, topics that we created. So if you remember, uh, if we go back to the notification service, we are sending one on the global notifications and one on the private notifications. So we go back to the scripts, topic and slash global notifications. And then we can copy this one from the, again, from the notification service. We put it back here and it's called private notifications and both of them will get this message. So this is uh, the message will be basically this what we are sending here and here. We're not really interested in it. If you want to, you can console log it or something. So this is how you get the message uh, from the body. Uh, but what we want to do is um, remove this and say uh, notification count is um, notification count plus one. So basically we want to uh, increment our notifications. We want to have say, okay, yeah, you have one more notification. And now once we have the notification, we want to update the notification display. And that would be it for the global notifications. And we can do the same for the private notifications. As you can see, they are now um, put together. So the private ones and the global ones. If you want to, you could have it separated. So we have two different uh, elements where you show them separately and uh, two different notification counts. So private one, global one, um, basically everything double, you know. Um, but for now, for this tutorial, for the sake of this tutorial, it's enough if we do it uh, all together. Okay, uh, let me start this and uh, let's see how it looks like. Okay, our application has started. So let's open it up, uh, refresh the page. And as you can see here, uh, we can send some global message and we can send some private message. So let me send a global one. And as you can see, it shows our uh, notification count here that we have one notification. And if I send something private here, so I'm sending the private message to myself, you can see that I get the notification count here also. If I now click it, you can see that it's gone. And if I send this message again, you can see now that I have one new message, so I get this notification count. So it's actually quite simple to implement notifications, so push notifications. If you're interested in uh, something like this, if you need it uh, for your project, this is one way you can do it. I guess there are many other ways, but this is the way, the, the simplest way I know that you can implement this. So I guess that would be it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, if something is not clear, um, do let me know and I will try to answer them either in comments or uh, via mail, depends how you reach me. And um, as always, this code is available on GitHub, so you can just take it from there and you can play with it. Yeah, if you liked the video, please do like it and subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos like this one. And I guess I will see you in the next one.